Are you a design student looking to create a portfolio soon but just don't know where to start? Well, this is the perfect video for you. Last year, I took a class called Portfolio where we designed one of our own. Today, I will be demonstrating how to create your own online portfolio in just three easy steps. The first step is to determine your platform. The second step is to gather your work. And the third step is to actually design your portfolio. Let's start with the first step. The first step is to choose a platform that you will use to create your own online portfolio. There are many options available, such as Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, and the list goes on. But a lot of these start off as free trials and then to get a domain or etc., you would have to pay a fee. It is important that you choose the platform that best serves you, your design needs, your preferences, and your style the best. For example, my previous portfolio was made using Wix. After a while, I kind of got bored of the layout and I wanted to spruce it up. So this is when I decided to explore other options. My most recent portfolio is created using the Adobe Portfolio website. I like the layout they provided much better compared to Wix and the other online portfolio website. So I gave it a try and I absolutely loved it. However, I am able to get this program through my school for free. I think after I graduate, I'm going to have to pay for the program, but it's okay because I use a lot of the Adobe softwares and they're very valuable to me as a design student. So I don't mind paying for the domain in the future. For the sake of this tutorial, we will be using the Adobe portfolio. Now on to step two. The second step is to gather your design work. In my portfolio class, my teacher shared that employers really like to see this evolution of work. And this advice truly impact what work I wanted to showcase in my portfolio. I started off by making a list of some of my best design projects and what showcased this evolution from beginning to end. When deciding what pieces to choose to showcase in your portfolio, it's important to ask yourself these few questions. Does this piece showcase my skills and creativity? And do these pieces as a whole show variety and versatility as a designer or an artist? Now that you have your art pieces or design pieces ready and selected, now it's time to actually organize and design our portfolio online. So this final step of designing our portfolio online is probably the most time consuming step, but it's very rewarding because it will draw those employers in and those potential clients in the future. So let's move on to the computer really quickly so I can show you exactly my format and how I designed my portfolio using online Adobe portfolio. Okay, so now we are online to my computer and as you can see, we have Adobe portfolio opened up and now I'll show you the step-by-step -step of what I did to create my online portfolio that you see here on the left. So once you're in the Adobe portfolio um, website, you're going to hit new sites. And then it gives you all of these layouts that you're gonna wanna kind of look at and decide which one best fits the work that you're going to showcase. So when deciding which layout I want to use for my portfolio creation, I just think about is it easy to follow um, and what showcases my work the best and how I decide to lay it out. These templates are great because they have something different for each person. Here, you scroll down, you'll probably like click a couple of them, preview them, see if you like it. And then on the top here, it has desktop, tablet, and phone view where you can basically go through each one and see if you like the theme. If you don't like it, you can go to the next one and so on. So for the sake of my tutorial, I'm going to use Sawdust. And I really think I like this one. I like the projects on the side. I like that I can put my logo here. I like that I can click on this and then it goes deeper into the project I'm going to show. So once you found one that you like, and that best suits your needs, um, you will click use this theme here. Okay, so now we are in the working space of where we will actually design our portfolio. So on the left side, you have pages that you will click on and this is where you would add pages and organize your portfolio. 
you get out of there we have integrations themes which is this is the theme sawdust that we decided to choose you have your settings here if you scroll down there's a lot more different personalization and customization options so you have site-wide you have the background color and the font that you can just change here right now it's on light i can change it to dark i personally like light so i'm going to leave it as so you can change the font size and the font under site-wide you have this collection which has the page covers and so on and so forth so everything is right here on the left side of the panel that you will use so let's get into the next step now this is where we are going to lay out our work so as stated in the beginning my teacher gave me that piece of advice of evolution of work so what i'm going to do is organize my portfolio in that manner so let's start with early works so i'll go up here to pages if I want to rename work to early works, you're going to hit this down button, edit collection title, and then that is where we enter early works. Perfect. So then you will see that it updates right here. So this is the category. And within that, I'm going to add a page with the plus sign. So I wrote Riverside here, create a page. And then you can see right here in the navigation, you have early works and right underneath it, it says Riverside. So then from here, this is where you're gonna add those high quality images, your color palette, your narrative, like everything for this project, you're going to put in underneath this page. So here we're going to add our images. So then you're gonna find the images that you're looking for. And I like this one. This is a rendering of the kitchen. And then again, you kind of just repeat this process until you get all of your images here. So this is Riverside. This is my kitchen rendering. This is my living room rendering. And this is the upstairs loft rendering. So now if I want to add the like floor plans and things like that, I'll go to add again. And let's say I want to show it not as these large images, but just as like a photo grid. So I'll hit photo grid here. You go to upload your files and then you will find the files that you're looking for. And then it creates a photo grid for you. So you can show your images larger or you can show them smaller where people literally would have to click on the image and then see it bigger. If you want to preview what it looks like, you'll hit preview in the left corner. And then let's go back to early works. So this is like the cover page. You can write the year. And then this is how it looks so far. So we have our site location where you can click to enlarge the image. You can go to the next one to find the site plan. The next one to find the floor plan and all of the house specs. As well as the... Uh, research center and all of their specs and then if you just keep hitting this arrow you get the enlarged rendering of the kitchen and loft the living room and the loft itself and then let's go back to the editor so let's say I'm still editing Riverside I want to include my narrative, so I'll put the text here, and then you'll just infill with the rest of your narrative here. And then you can also, like, let's say I don't like this font. They'll give you the options to change the typography size. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger, you can change the font size if I want it bold. You can change this, the color. I think that's too dark, we'll change the color. So. It's very personalizable and customizable, which is great. This will also help you to stand out and make your portfolio very memorable. Another important page to add here is a contact page. So let's go to our contact page. This is very simple. They already have one made up in this template. The person will leave their name, their email address, a message, and then they'll submit it. When you are done with your portfolio and you've organized it and you're really happy with it, You'll press publish, and this is kind of like what your portfolio could look like. So I'll show you my own. We'll do preview. 
and here you go so this is my logo right here i'm an interior designer i have my about page which is also very important where you would basically tell the employers or potential clients a little bit about yourself you can show a headshot photo i don't have one yet so i just have this photo from a photo shoot that i taken if you hit about you will see that i have these three different folders where I have the about me page of what I just spoke about earlier. We can go back. We have my resume right here, which is very awesome because they can just print it right off or they can just see it from the website. You go back to my about. I've also linked in the ASID conferences that I've been to and that is a direct link right into my YouTube channel. We go back. The way I decided to organize my portfolio was early works, residential, commercial, competitions, and construction sets. So again, just showing that evolution of work. So these are my early works. You have some hand drafting. You can scroll down, you can enlarge the images. You can scroll back up. If we go into residential, these are my more residential projects and so on. So you can see that I had customized pretty much everything I really wanted my portfolio to read as like a newspaper when you open it so you have the concept on top you have the floor plans that can be enlarged very clear all the graphics are very clear you can zoom in and zoom out and there's no fuzziness which is very important you have the kitchen rendering some elevations and so on so once I decided that I really wanted to have my portfolio just be in this like newspaper article style and manner, I kind of just set that as a template for myself. And I just laid out each project that way. Again, my contact page right here at the bottom, very simple. And then you can also link your um, social medias here, which is very important because if you have like Instagram pages or YouTube channels that go with your niche or go with your design portfolio why not just link it all together so they can get an inside view of you as a designer and there you have it a step-by-step -step guide of how to create your own design portfolio online using adobe portfolio first we chose a platform then we gathered our work and finally, we actually got into the nitty gritty and designed that portfolio and customized it with typography, imagery, color palette, and etc. When it's your turn to design your portfolio, make sure that you stand out. Make sure you're showcasing your best works. Make sure you're staying true to your personal brand and make it easy for people to contact you. Remember, your portfolio is ever changing. It's never set in stone. So good luck designing your own portfolio. I hope this tutorial helped you out. If you have any more questions, leave the comments below and I will get back to you. Feel free to take a look at my portfolio further in depth for yourself and I will see you next time. Thanks.